Thank you for joining me today. I am Brad with Unwired View, here to talk to you about the Motorola Droid 2 Global. So you may have heard about the Droid 2 before. It seemed like a pretty cool device, but it didn't have the extra cool long title, right? The Droid 2 Global fulfills that extra word to make that title just even cooler. So what is it about the Droid 2 Global that makes it so different than the Droid 2 Not Global? Obviously in the title, that says a lot because the Droid 2 Global, this little guy right here, can work around the world. Whereas the Droid 2 was pretty much uh, limited to working in the US only. So Droid 2 Global, you can use it around the world. Well, what are the other differences? And how exactly does it perform? Is it something worth looking into? All these burning questions, I know you're going in thinking, okay, well that's why I clicked on the little link to go watch the video. So you're going to tell me about it. So, maybe I should just get right to it. So let's do it. Let's go check out the Droid 2 Global right here. Many of you may be familiar already with the Droid 2 original that came out a few months ago. In fact, you may be looking at this phone uh, already and thinking, well, it is the Droid 2. I don't know what you're talking about. But in fact, this is actually the Droid 2 Global, which uh, for all intents and purposes is essentially the same exact phone. It's all identical for uh, the most part with the exception of just a couple major differences. Uh, one of the biggest differences, of course, you can find in the name of the phone itself being Global. Well, that means that it has a SIM card in the back. And the SIM card itself uh, will give you the ability to take it around the world and use it on uh, any GSM network uh, that you come across uh, in your travels. The reason why this is such a nice thing is because Verizon uh, being a CDMA network is not going by the global standard. So it's very seldom that you'll actually go to a different country and find a CDMA network available. So uh, having that SIM card in there will make it so you can take it around with you and use any other network. So it truly becomes a global standard now uh, having that chip in there. So just uh, one of the big things, but the other big difference is going to be that this one here uh, it has a 1.2 gigahertz processor compared to just a standard 1 gigahertz processor in the original Droid 2. So that might not necessarily be a huge uh, difference to you uh, but if you were to go through and compare the two uh, in terms of processor speed, you would you would notice a little bit of a difference there. So even on this, just moving up and down, like it's incredibly responsive. Like it doesn't uh, require any time at all to follow me wherever I go, and that's a huge, huge deal. And going into programs, it's very quick. Going into whatever I need to. So some great advantages of having the 1.2 gigahertz processor in there. <clears throat> Let's go into the design of the Droid 2 Global. Now the uh, the Droid 2 Global has Android 2.2 on it, so it's uh, what's common re commonly referred to as Froyo. It has uh, some of the latest features like flash capabilities, and that's another thing that that 1.2 gigahertz processor is really going to come in handy on, is uh, being able to handle all of this flash use. Flash does end up taking up a lot of the processor speed. So that's another important note is uh, uh, that the Droid 2 Global will be able to handle a lot of that stuff. Looking into this, it's a very Motorola, Motoblur inspired user interface without actually being Motoblur. Uh, you can see a lot of these different widgets uh, shown on here just by default. These ones are similar to what you would see on Motoblur. So the difference on this one is since Motoblur is more of a consumer centric uh, user interface, they wanted to make this one a little bit more business friendly just considering that's what it's built for. Uh, also looking into this we've got the uh, the slider keyboard. So we have the full QWERTY Definitely the keys are a decent size on here. They're bubbled up a little bit that are supposed to help keep them separate and, and be easier to press. Uh, personally, I've tried typing on it. It's okay, not my favorite keyboard, but it does sufficient. I uh, can't really complain too much about that, but uh, at the same time, for something using up this much space 
and this much thickness, I would have hoped for a little bit nicer uh, keyboard. So just another thing to note. Now in terms of other differences between this and the original Droid 2, it's hard to tell, but right there you've got a little lip. And this is for the camera itself. The camera just ends up being a little bit thicker on this one for some reason. So you just have that. Uh, also in here you've got an 8 gigabyte micro SD card already included in uh, in the external memory that can be expanded up to 32. Already on the phone you've got 8 gigs as it is so uh, it's nice to start out with 16 gigs on here and then be able to expand it even further. And while these uh, top-of-the-line specs help the phone uh, perform very very well it is uh, definitely an efficient performing phone there are some things about it that uh, I just don't like. For example, the design in general of the phone. Since it has that included keyboard, uh, they're uh, trying to incorporate extra little ways to make it look sleek. You've got that little lip over there, for example. Um, the back actually looks pretty cool. I, I like the, the design of the back quite a lot. The, uh, the back on here, instead of it just being a standard glossy plastic, it is actually more of a, a metal casing. So you definitely can tell that you're getting a top quality solid phone. The hard thing on this one, for me anyways, is that it just feels boxy. Uh, both in my hand and when it slid out as the keyboard. It's just it's very clunky in nature to me. And that's kind of frustrating. So, you know, I try to, to, to paint it with a better picture. I mean, it's still a, a brand new phone with top of the line specs, but looking at this design it feels like it's a couple years old and that it's just past its time so that's uh, that's rather unfortunate that that I feel that way about it but other than that it's like I said a higher performing phone and you'll be able to get a lot of great stuff out of it especially compared to some of the other uh, low budget Android phones out there this one is uh, one of the best another thing to point out is you don't have to use a keyboard if you don't want to when you go into uh, any sort of messaging or searching or whatever, you do have access to the online or on sorry on screen keyboard. Uh, this one that I'm using in particular is Swipe. That's my uh, my personal favorite at the moment. But you can go with the stock Android keyboard option. So the thing is, why go with a phone that's like this? where I'm describing the design to you where it's just kind of clunky and boxy and, and obviously the uh, keyboard itself has to add extra thickness to the device. Just think about how much thinner it would be without that keyboard. So these are, these are some things to keep in mind as well is uh, what else are you getting in return uh, if all you're using is the on-screen keyboard. And definitely you've got those specs that are, that are great but are there other phones that can perform uh, in a similar fashion that would be much more comfortable in your hand and, and lighter overall. Uh, so those are a few thoughts. My experience with the Droid 2 Global was pretty good. The uh, call quality was good, speaker phone was perfectly fine, no issues in terms of volume or static or drop calls or anything like that. And, and certainly drop calls would not typically be a huge issue uh, considering it is on uh, Verizon's 3G network. So that's another thing to keep in mind is that just the overall performance there uh, is certainly is affected by that. Uh, also with this, the keyboard itself was okay and I think for most people the keyboard will be perfectly fine. Uh, for me, it's just, even though it was a little bit of a, a little bit bubbled up, I still had a hard time typing rather quickly on it. Um, typing itself was okay but as soon as I started picking up the pace and going faster that's when I started tripping up on myself. So that's really the, uh, the big thing about the keyboard that I just uh, wasn't too happy about. The battery life is nothing spectacular. It's an Android phone, so what do you expect, right? It's rated for six and a half hours by the manufacturer, and actually that's about the top that you can get for an Android. So for me, it lasted about that long, and uh, I was satisfied with the battery overall. So nothing huge there. Yeah, it can always be better. 
but that the same can be said with any Android. Plus the fact that you've got a 1.2 gigahertz processor with a huge screen and all these other extra things, the, the flash of course, um, all these extra features that can be thrown in and, and used at any time, they're going to be causing a drain on the battery. And once again, I encourage you to check out my review at unwiredview.com. My name is Brad, and it's been wonderful to have this review with you. We'll look forward to talking to you again soon.